Now, he's a U.S. citizen who was arrested in connection with last year's Mumbai terrorist attacks. But now Internet reports have started circulating that David Headley may actually have been a double agent for the CIA at the time of the incident. For more on this, we can cross live to our Washington studio where Lauren Leister is standing by. So, Lauren, what's the story behind these allegations? Break it down for us. Well, evidently, some indication in the court documents in the criminal case against Headley is leading to this report. Uh, at least one Israeli website with ties to the Israeli intelligence community has gone into detail of this theory that Headley is a, was a CIA double agent. Here to speak with us more about this theory is historian Webster Tarpley. Mr. Tarpley, we're hearing now reports that Headley was involved with the CIA. What evidence, where is this coming from, this evidence, and is it credible? Well, the main charge comes from the Indian Home Ministry. That is to say, this is the opinion of the Home Secretary, the Police Minister of India, Gopal Pillai, and his spokesman says that India is looking into whether Headley was a double agent working for the U.S. Now, let me point out, this is David Coleman Headley, born Daoud Gilani, uh, a heroin pusher who went to work for the Drug Enforcement Administration of the United States. More than 10 years ago, uh, he had been caught smuggling heroin. They let him off with a two-year sentence, and after that, he'd been working very, very industriously for the DEA. Did he then go on to work for the CIA? And it looks like they did. Uh, Where? Who says know, that? Where does uh, that evidence come from? essentially from the, the Hindu, the, the Times of India, the London Times. Uh, everybody seems to agree that he worked for the DEA. The only explanation, because otherwise, heroin smuggling, you get 50 years to life, not two years, and then you're allowed to go out traveling back to Pakistan and, and indeed to India, because he was always going, going to India. But here's the thing. If this David Headley was working for the CIA all along, which I think is a very, very plausible conclusion. It means that the CIA is implicated in running, in masterminding, the Mumbai terror attacks of November 2008. It means the CIA is up to its neck in this thing. Well, what makes you believe that that could be a scenario? Well, what that's, what the, that's what the Indian authorities are saying. See, Headley was arrested in the United States now in October. And he's accused of wanting to do a terror attack in Denmark against this Julens Posten, the newspaper you may recall, 2005, they published the deplorable, uh, provocative Muhammad cartoons that caused a furor in the world. So he's supposedly planning an attack in Denmark. So the U.S. rounds him up, Headley, along with his friend Rana and another mysterious figure, Major Saeed of Pakistani military intelligence, also seems to be... Uh, indicted in this in this affair, so that's the, uh, the 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 thing that calls attention to Headley. But now the Indians then go back and say, "Hey, wait a minute! This guy has been coming to India repeatedly. The CIA never told us that he was implicated in terrorism." So okay, now that it, brings me to to uh, there is evidence that the Indians are kind of up in arms in this, and they think that it's possible right? that the CIA knew about the plans for the Mumbai attack and did not tell India. What is this doing to affairs between New Delhi and Washington, D.C., or what's going to happen? Well, India is demanding the extradition of David Coleman Headley, and I doubt he'll ever be extradited because the U.S. is going to keep him in the U.S. so that this, these secrets are never shared with India. The other thing is there are lots and lots of FBI tapes of Headley talking to various terrorists on the phone. India would like to have those. Those are being denied. You've got to look at the timing. The Mumbai attacks came just a couple of months after the beginning of this U.S.-India nuclear accord, which essentially makes India into a kind of expendable pawn for the United States against Pakistan on the one side and against China, indeed, on the other. But very, very bad idea. But basically, what does this do to relations between India it and gives, the U.S.? It gives India a chance to think again. Do you really want to make your career and your place in the world that of being a cat's paw for the U.S. against these other countries? Don't you want to pull out of this while you still can? Think of the, uh, the 70s experience in Europe, right? The countries like we're Germany, to, Italy, that I'm were sorry. most tied to the NATO structure fared very badly. India is going to fare badly. It's time to pull away from this. And we're going to have to leave it at that for today. Thank you so much, for Mr. Tarpley, and we're going to send it back to you in Moscow. All right. Lauren Leister there in Washington for us. Thanks for that.